Hey guys, welcome to the second in a series of six videos where we look at the key definitions that you need to know for the higher physics exam. In this video, we cover the definitions for the first half of the Our Dynamic Universe topic, and I'd recommend that you make your own flashcards from these definitions. You can do this by writing down the word or term on one side, and the definition or the meaning on the other side. So let's get into it. Our first definition is speed, and this is defined as the distance travelled per unit time, or the distance travelled each second. This is a scalar quantity. Velocity is our next one, and this is the displacement per unit time, or the displacement each second. It is a vector quantity, and it can also be thought of as the vector equivalent of speed. So this means that speeds need a magnitude but not a direction, whereas velocity values need both a magnitude and a direction. Moving on we have acceleration, and acceleration is defined as the change in velocity per unit time, or the change in velocity each second. This is also a vector quantity and is given by the gradient of the line on a velocity time graph. Next we have Newton's first law, and this says that an object will remain at rest or move at a constant speed in a straight line unless acted on by an unbalanced force. Next we have Newton's second law, which says that when the forces acting on an object are unbalanced, the object will accelerate in the direction of the unbalanced force. And you'll know this definition more commonly as the equation for Newton's second law, which is F equals ma. Moving on we have terminal velocity, and this says that for an object in free fall, a constant speed is reached when the upward force on the object, i.e. the air resistance, is balanced by the downward force on the object, i.e. the weight. And terminal velocity is just another name for this constant speed. Newton's third law is our next one, and this says that if an object A exerts a force on object B, then B exerts an equal but opposite force on A. Or, a more commonly used definition is for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Next we have the principle of conservation of energy, also known as the law of conservation of energy, and this says that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but can change from one form to another. In other words, we cannot just create energy from nothing. Moving on we have the principle of conservation of momentum, also known as the law of conservation of momentum, and this says that the total momentum before an interaction is equal to the total momentum after the interaction, provided there are no external forces acting on the objects. And it's very important that you remember to include this last part about no external forces acting if you're asked to state this law or principle of conservation of momentum. Next we have an inelastic collision, and this is a collision in which momentum is conserved but kinetic energy is not, and it's often the case that some of the kinetic energy is converted to heat and sound upon impact. Elastic collision is our next one, and this is a collision in which both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved, in other words they both stay the same before and after an interaction. Lastly we have impulse, and impulse is simply the product of force and time. It is also a vector quantity, which means direction and magnitude are both important. Impulse is also equal to the change in momentum of an object and is given by the area under a force time graph. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.